traumatized or re-traumatized by the system, compounded with this legacy of trauma that already they had on their shoulders. Mm -hmm. And nobody is doing anything to resolve or improve or reform these services to actually meet the demands of the community in a way that's actually going to mm -hmm. work. So when, you, when, you, when you're talking about, again, talking to that, getting a better feel for mm -hmm. that piece, when you say staff at Multnomah County, are, are these are they professionals or is it? Yeah, these are professionals. Profe professional yes, folks. Okay. Oh yes. And uh, and then I start thinking about clientele. I mean, let, if we can go through that flow, you know, in terms mm -hmm. of uh, naturally Multnomah County, that's one of their services that they provide, right? Got me. And and so can we go through that flow? And, and you know, how does one get into that system? And then when sure. when are they then? Uh, when they, when do they go out and outreach a person like mm -hmm. yourself? Sure. Come and intervene, and, and how long do you maintain the case? Do you, mm -hmm. Okay, can you it's just a, talk it, to that? Yeah, sure. It's a complex answer because it really depends on the program and the organization. Okay. Um, what's, that, what's their present program? Can we talk a little bit? Do you have an Well, Multnomah County, in and of itself, has many different programs. Okay. There's right. there's a plethora of programs. So I, I don't want to speak to programs that I don't have a lot of awareness okay. of. I can speak to the programs that I've worked. Right, for. just the middle. The, the sure. Middle. Okay. So so in the programs that I've worked for. Um, there are a couple of different ways that people wind up being referred. One of the ways is they are mandated to treatment by Child Protective Services, um, by uh, the corrections programs, mm -hmm. um, or some other sort of social service agency is telling this person, you must go to treatment. And then from there, if they are Medicaid clients, because all of these clients, you know, for the mm -hmm. most part, the, the I would probably say the majority of the clients that are coming into the, the programs that I've worked for are folks who have Medicaid. And the Medicaid uh, programs are contracted through certain agencies within the county, okay. right? So one of the agencies that I worked for was, uh, was an agency that was contracted for services. That's where you so, pick up your pills. For example, yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> pick up your pills. <laughs> exactly. Okay, okay. So, so you know, people are either told directly from the person who's mandating them or from their uh, insurance, their OHP insurance provider to do an intake with one of these programs. Okay. So then the, the county has demands on uh, access to services, like if anybody calls in they have to, you know, you have to do an intake with this person, mm -hmm. whether or not it's actually appropriate to do an intake with them, but that's a whole other issue. Or whether or not you're overloaded as a clinician and actually can't take on more clients, it doesn't matter, you still have to see that person. So somebody comes in, and um, from there, then they're re either referred to, you know, stay in the program or they're referred to another program, something along those lines. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got you. So the problem is, is that programs, for example, like the one that I work for or worked for, um, they're on paper supposed to provide services in a particular format. But the training, the supervision, to maintain the expertise to provide these services are not in fact actually happening. Huh. And so you see, I mean, I've, I've, I can tell you about, um, you know, watching staff members cuss clients out in front of me, huh. you know? And More so, than than yeah. Okay. And so, I mean, they're, they're not direct employees of Multnomah County, but that's where the funding is coming from. And my, my, my heartfelt desire as a clinician is to make sure that the clients that I'm working with have a better quality of life when I'm done working with them. And as a result, my role as a clinician is to educate myself, to get the adequate training that I need and the adequate supervision that I need in order to make sure that that happens. Throughout my entire tenure in the role that I was in, I paid for supervision outside of, of my, my job. Hmm because I wasn't ever receiving enough supervision or adequate supervision to really be able to hone okay. in on, on how to provide those quality services. So who sets up that criteria for, for providing those services, let's say at the county? I mean, I, not that I'm trying to get you, I mean, you would think, as I, as I, as I hear you mm -hmm. and as I hear about your background mm -hmm. in terms of how you pursued those studies sure. to get where you are, sure. and then yet and still I see that there's an issue here with reference to the staff, let's say Multnomah County, I'm thinking about where where did they pursue their studies, and if if, if Pacific College specifically focused in that particular arena, I'm I'm concerned about where did their staff get their training, and at what level. 
I, I couldn't answer that question. Mm, okay. I mean, I really couldn't. And, um, you know, throughout my time working in community mental health, I've certainly tried to influence um, administrators in the programs that I've worked mm -hmm. with uh, to provide better quality services. And I've provided suggestions about how to go about mm -hmm. doing that. Um, you know, whether or not those suggestions were ever considered valuable, I, mm -hmm. I couldn't say. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, those individuals that I know who have worked within the sort of upper echelons of administration, dealing, you know, going back and forth between the county, going back and forth between OHP um, to do this, you know, to fund the services mm -hmm. that are coming down for clients. Mm -hmm. Those individuals that I see who are individuals of character and integrity have found themselves broken by working in those, in those systems and, and have had to leave because their sense of actually being able to impact anything was just nil. I mean, it just, they, they went into many of those positions uh, with a sense of hopefulness, a mm -hmm. desire to change uh, the, the status quo, and found it entirely impossible to mm -hmm. do so. Well, I will say that uh, from my recollection, we've had issues at Multnomah County with reference to that particular service. I mean, we've, we've been tough trying to and maintain a director, in mm -hmm. some cases some folks of color mm -hmm. uh, were, were basically the lead person mm -hmm. and they lost their job, et mm -hmm. cetera, et cetera. It, it just went on and on and on. But let, let's get back to a couple of things that, that just comes to mind with reference to the whole issue of mental illness. At, at one time, we, at one point in time, we had a controlled sort of an environment for the mental ill, you know, like mm -hmm. the, 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 the state the hospitals. Movie, yeah, the mm -hmm. movie like the Who Flew Over the Cuckoo. Sure. That type of situation. <laughs> Which in and of itself had yeah, its yeah. own problems. See, but no, they, they were issued the pills. Mm -hmm. And now we don't have that system. We Basically, the folks, are, they, they're sort of like given the opportunity and saying, okay, fine, uh, here's your prescription and go get your pills. Now, if they're ill, I, it, it, that bothers me to a certain degree. How can a person take well, responsibility? Well, it depends on the program. Some programs okay. are more controlled. Um, okay. There are programs, like I know that Cascadia has had programs where um, folks will go in to the clinic every day to get their What if they don't show up? And, you know, and then all of a sudden they're, they're, they're in a confrontation with maybe law enforcement mm -hmm. or, or just with a citizen mm -hmm. on the street and whatever, and they don't know what's going and on. And there are also what intensive community-based services as well for folks who um, have severe and persistent mental illness. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's a, there are, there are, um, so there are services that are designed to, okay. they're supposed to be designed okay. to impact the individual okay. Um, at, at more of a, a, the level that they're at, okay. to meet them where they're at. But, you know, the problem is, is that <laughs> most of these services are underfunded, mm -hmm. and so you're working with very little resources. As a clinician on the ground, you're working with very little resources, having to drive very long distances in order, if you're doing community-based work, um, and, and, uh, and, and often the push is medication, 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 instead of rehabilitation, integration of systems, um, supportive, uh, you know, like strength-based empowering vocational services that can mm -hmm. actually direct people toward um, their highest sort of uh, self-actualization. Mm -hmm. you know? So I take it you, you all did have discussion when you were going through your pursuing your studies uh, as to uh, which was best, a control environment sure. as opposed to that's a, absolutely an, an element for sure. What, what mm -hmm. was it? What was the what was the feel? The, the, the system well, the, we have today. Or? I mean, to go. Or was there was a mix, so to speak? To go to to kind of try to abbreviate it as much as yeah. possible. I best I guess the best way to say it is, you always try to provide the most inclusive, least intrusive services. Okay. So. The reason that you know a lot of the care in the community came out was really to try to be in line with that effort of most inclusive, least mm -hmm. intrusive, because it is very intrusive and very expensive mm -hmm. to hospitalize someone. But at the end of the day, again, if programs are not funded, yeah. you know, to provide adequate services and staffing, mm -hmm. you're never going to be able to um, execute in reality what on paper can seem so idealistic. Mm -hmm. Well, another piece that comes out of that whole deal, I, I think about uh, our public schools. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you hear these things about the uh, fact that young people, young kids in, in the, during those formative years, you know, first, second, mm -hmm. third grade or so, mm -hmm. whatever, are, uh, are either get whatever disruptive or whatever, and they're given pills. I mean, yeah. it's like we're just adding, we, we're just putting together another generation, if you will, of, the, of, a, of a major, major issue. Mm -hmm. 
Did you, did you all talk about that kind of an issue? For sure, for sure. I mean, these are these are things that are discussed in, in academia uh, all the time. You know, the problem is always the translation from academia and theory to reality mm -hmm. and what you're actually dealing with in reality because the kids who, you know, have resources are more likely to go to therapy right. and get um, more of that... Um, uh, interactional mm -hmm. um, response is going to be supportive mm -hmm. and in addition to having just many other protective factors mm -hmm. in place but kids who are at risk who have very few protective factors in place are the kids who are more likely to kind of be on the cycle of pills mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and uh, and not have um, not be educated consumers about what's happening or their families being educated consumers about what's happening 90 90 percent of the time and you know maybe it's not a, a an accurate number yeah, but yeah. but a majority of the time the families themselves are so dysfunctional that they can't really be uh you know actively engaged in services and the problem is not so much that that is um uh you know that is a fact of uh uh our communities but the problem is is that the proportions compared mm -hmm. to you know uh, Caucasian families, the proportions are so much higher in our communities. So it is a, a factor that affects our communities more uh, impactfully than than in other communities. Well, you know, I think it's a very serious problem yeah. because, in all due respect, uh, it sort of gets right into the adoption program. You know, African American family all of a sudden got kid disrupted in school, and after a certain period of time, the kid can't go to school. Mm -hmm. The next thing you know, they're in that system, if you will, in the adoption program. They take the child away from the from the from the parent, if you will, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, which only they creates that yeah, ongoing, ongoing legacy game, of legacy trauma, of fra trauma, fragmentation of form families, them out, or, form them out, yeah. and, and, and it, it carries a, a higher higher peace aspect of it. Boy, Absolutely. I tell you, it looked like we got one minute or so and whatever. Ooh. I really wanted to open up the the line, if you will. Let's see if we can get a call. Let's at least get one call in. Can we get one call in? Oh, there's a caller sitting up there looking at me. <laughs> okay, Gene, how you doing? But anyway, what we're gonna do? I tell you what we're gonna do, Aisha. We're gonna we're gonna have. I gotta get you come back on here. Yeah. We've got some things we need to deal with, and maybe I might be able to get someone from the Absolutely. county, mm -hmm. if you will, from that particular department to come and talk to the issues that you yeah. raise, which I think is good because we're trying to improve the community mm -hmm. because we got issues across the board. You know, we got mm -hmm. we got things now of major concern. We got young people that are, are listed as gang members <laughs> and things of that nature. But in all due respect, it, to me, they're still youth. Well, and, I, I have to issue. say, Bruce, if you can get someone t from the county yes. or someone from the upper echelons of yes. administration to come and talk to me, you're doing far better than I could ever do. Because be I mean, the, 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 my attempts to have conversations yeah. uh, while I was there. working community mental health never happened. Well, we've got to do something about <laughs> I know, it. I know, right? And, and it's a very important Absolutely. piece, and we will Absolutely. give them the opportunity to share their thoughts on the issue. Absolutely. And again, from a taxpayer standpoint, you know, since I'm paying for the system, you are also yeah. too. You want to make sure we're getting our bucks worth. Mm -hmm. Is that a fair share? Mm -hmm. Well, okay. I just want to make sure that our community is getting what we deserve Yes. yes. Uh, as far one. as the the services that good. we deserve. Well, it's, it's good that you've enlightened, if you will, the, 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 the viewership here, that in fact there are folks like yourself that are focusing specifically in that culture, the African-American culture, which is very important. That's just a small minority, Absolutely. if you will, of that deal, and it's a very important piece if, in fact, you're going to survive in this, in mm -hmm. this, in this situation mm -hmm. we're in. Well, look, I want to thank you for being on with Absolutely. us this time around, and I will be in touch with you, and let's see if we can put something together. All right. Well, Aisha, thank you so much. Always a pleasure. Mm -hmm. Okay, good enough, and thank you again. Again, again folks, this was Aisha Edwards. Uh, uh, she's our master's in clinical psychology from Pacific University, and she's a clinical psycho a professional. And, and her services are basically contracted through the counties and others, okay? And so with that, we're going to say thank you very much. And uh, what we'll do, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see you in the next half hour, okay? We'll take a short break. Thank you. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend.